in a previous message, um, without dynamic bones, things are very stiff, right? So as any normal object, it's if I move it back and forward, and you can imagine this in VR space as well, right? You're holding something and you're just physically moving it forward and backwards with your hands. With dynamic bones, it's rich, literally so easy. As long as your object has a, a mat, like a skeletal mesh, um, then you literally add dynamic bones. You choose like your the, the root bone you want it to affect. I'll go into this in more detail now. And now when I move my object, literally that's how easy dynamic bones is. It's one tiny thing and then when I move an object just using normal gravity, it makes things super wobbly. And then very easily you can go into it and just in this example, damping now when I wobble, I don't see any wobble. I don't see anything moving. You're not seeing anything moving? Are you guys seeing anything on the screen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, everything great. Lex, you mad, bro. Just have to keep looking. <laughs> what, are you, what are you seeing? Uh, I'm seeing the stream. I'm just seeing the robot uh, in the Unity. Yeah, and you're not seeing a move like that. No, but I think my internet. Yeah, it's probably your internet. On. Yeah, oh, let me it. carry on. Um, so basically, the idea is this is an asset. It's twenty dollars. As long as you're applying it to something that has a skeleton, right? So why I'm using an avatar is from the previous workshops. You'll see creating a humanoid skeleton. If you do something with Mixamo, for example, it does it automatically. So I can't apply dynamic bones to just a cube or something like that. It has to actually have a skeleton underneath it. So what I'm gonna do is, I think let's do a quick little, a very basic sculpt, and then I'll take that into um, Masterpiece, which is, it's also a paid thing, but it's really cool for, for, I use it predominantly just for rigging. Rigging and skinning is a really, can be a really tedious process and being in VR really helps for it. Like it makes it kind of fun rigging stuff. So once that's rigged in there, we'll just export it out. We won't texture anything and bring it into Unity and just apply the bones. But what we'll do is we won't use a, a humanoid, we'll make like a little jellyfish or something like that. Um, so let me quickly make something. All right, let's do something in medium quickly. So obviously like you can do it with anything, right? But jelly and like you'll see eggs, little gif he posted, like literally a ball of jelly. Um, you can put it on someone's belly so it doesn't have to be like a limb you could literally sculpt a little someone with a fat belly and have their belly wobble around but i think what we'll do is let's make just like a kind of like a weird little worm thing and so we can demo it let's give it some weird kind of feeler things right so it's not going to be I mean this could be an avatar but basically the thinking behind it is it's a little like tadpole kind of creature right and we um, want it that when it's what? moving up and down it doesn't move like this like a stiff stick. I can't hear anything okay. <laughs> must be your audio <laughs> all right so we've got a little model we are going to export it out let's make it very small for now and make it an obj export chuck it on the desktop worm export Right. 
So there's our little worm exported. So skinning is mostly done, I'd say generally in like Blender and Maya, um, those, those apps. Um, any kind of CAD package will be able to do skinning and wave painting. Basically, what that is, oh, we've got a nice big update going. Is it only me that has no sound? I can't hear anybody. Or is it something I'm doing with Discord? <laughs> it's you. It's you, Lawless. Hit the, hit the Discord settings and uh, just change them back from default to thing. It usually resets it. You can't hear us, though. <laughs> There is that. All right, almost there, almost there. I can hear you now, but I can't. Hear, are you just not talking sometimes? Uh, we were waiting for you to bless us with your ears. Bro. All right, come on, come on. Yeah, so masterpiece is really cool. It's also got a um, like a very similar to medium. Um, where you can actually sculpt, but you can also texture inside of Masterpiece Creator. So you can actually do all your, your textures, bring in textures. It's really, really quite neat. Mm -mm. All right, there we go. All right, so we are now in masterpiece motion and I'm just going to go over like we'll do it quite basically right so what I want to do is let's it's a new project um, let's import a model where are we parent directory let's go to our desktop and choose our little worm all right, so there's our little worm, just load it up. And <clears throat> so like I mentioned, you have to actually give it a skeleton. At the moment, it's just geometry. So what we want to do is just give it maybe th three bones along its body, and then we can give it two bones per ear. Um, same thing as always, real time, the more bones you have, the better it will look, but the more performance hit it's going to have. So. I'm going to do it quite rough and I can literally start drawing inside here the bone and obviously being VR it's a lot easier to place and you can just check that the bones are connected those look good now I want to do the feelers same thing draw the feelers out just three Choose the main bone, check they're connected, all right. Draw some more feelers. There we go. So we've got basic, a very basic skeleton, like a real animal, right? We've got the front head, we've got kind of a waist area and a little tail area. Um, I think let's draw one tiny little bit at the end there so you can waggle it a bit more. Um, now what you could do is I could make other bones like I could make a random one here and weight his stomach if he had something like that or if he had arms flapping down same process again so now what I'm going to do is I've got the skeleton but I need to tell each bone what area of influence it's acting if it's going to affect so if I move this middle one I don't want it to affect the front here I only want it to affect around there but also I don't want it to just pull the mesh up. I want it to be quite a smooth process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do go to skin and I am going to do an auto skin for now just to see how that looks. What auto skinning will do is it's just gonna kind of guess. It's gonna say like, okay, I've got this bone, what's kind of around me um, and kind of automatically just decide for you. So there we go. Now what happens is when I select each of these bones, you'll see all this kind of color pattern. So let's select the middle one. You can see it's got color pattern here and it's got white, so it's not affected here. So now when I actually move this, 
it's moving those affected areas. So it's not quite doing what I wanted to do there. Um, I can check the other bones. Some of them look pretty good. But because it's a purpose of a dynamic bone, I won't go into too much detail. But to show you as an example, say this part of the body, right? Uh, it feels like a bit of a problem. If he's flying and he's wobbling like that, I don't want his mouth to be moving when that bone is wobbling. But you can see these points have got this blue color. And how the color works is, it's almost think of it as a gradient that goes red, yellow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then red means it will affect everything 100%. And as the colors start fading to blue, it means it's going to affect it a lot less. So I'm just going to reset it back to its like default position. I'm going to choose this bone, which I've selected now, and I'm going to say subtract. And now I can just come and work where I don't want that bone to affect. So very quickly, we can sculpt around and very quickly I can now also grab the bone and now you see when he's wobbling, let's look from underneath, it's no longer affecting his mouth anymore, which is what we were wanting to achieve. So you can imagine you can get super detailed. So again here, let's, yeah, for example, I really don't want the feelers to affect anything else but the feeler. So you can see it's affecting there. We're still on subtract. So I'm just going to subtract all of that, even at the front a bit here. Let's choose that muscle. It's definitely not affecting the body. Let's remove that. It doesn't have to affect the front. Remove those. Yeah, that's looking better. Choose this one. Again, it doesn't have to affect nearly as much. Let's move all of that. Could affect top of his head though, depending on how how liquidy this character is. So let's do it like that. Yeah, I think that's good for now. And then again, just quickly, let's just do it to this one as well. Move that. And there we go. All right, so We've now done a, a little cleanup. It's looking pretty good. It's got his little skeleton. You can preview everything, hit it back to default. And you could obviously spend a lot more time here developing it um, and refining it. But for the purposes of the workshop, we'll just go export selected model. Let's call it worm. All right, FBX, it's definitely not a humanoid and export all right and that is now exported all right so before we close that let's just check it's there so now what we want to do is just go find that um, Masterpiece Motion, Exports, Worm. So there's our worm. Let's drag it inside our assets and drag it onto our stage. Just want to give it a bit of bounding box shortcut. All right. So here's our little worm. And the difference being, similar to avatars, is if I open Worm, he's now got a bunch of bones. So you've got the geometry, but now I've got a top bone, bone 0, bone 3, bone 7. And even here now I can come in and I can kind of move it. So you can see what I was talking about, the colors. You see over here how it's got such a hard edge. That's because the weight painting of that front bone is a very hard color. If we went in and smoothed it, that out, 
when I rotated it, it wouldn't have such a hard fall off. It would actually curve a lot more. But we'll uh, won't worry about that for now. Let's check. So is that process called weight painting? Is that what? what yeah, you're exactly. The color, painting? the coloring is weight painting. Okay. So it's painting different weights to affect different bones. And right now if we hit play and we hit move. Same thing like before, our little worm is pretty boring. So what we want to do is we actually want to add dynamic bones. So I like to choose the armature and then add component. Sorry, once you've downloaded dynamic bones from the asset store, you just hit dynamic bone. That will add the script and it's supported in VR chat, even though it's a script. And what you've got to do is you've got to tell this now, what is the root bone? So let's choose our what bone zero is our main kind of body. So that's definitely going to be one. Actually, let's do this. We'll say the top joint for now is going to be our root bone. So what that is basically saying is every single bone that sits under this first top one is going to be affected by the dynamic bone. So when I hit play now, so let's just get rid of this game window. When I hit play now, and now I move it, whoop, our little guy's got some wobble. So you can imagine if it's in your hand, like that little dragon of mine, I could put that in a hand of a VR chat avatar and as my, I just move my hand around, naturally it's got this kind of wobble. So in this case, I'm like, hmm, I don't, I want his body to wobble, but I want this part to be quite stiff and I want his ears to be super like, like flowing with the wind, right? So what I can do there is I can say, okay, let's not have the top joint here. Let's put, let's just put the backbone, oops. Let's put the backbone as that root, right? Which means this front section doesn't have a, let's play that to demonstrate. The front section doesn't have a bone anymore, but from the front onwards does. So now you can see the head still functioning. So say, for example, it was an avatar, you could still have your everything working as it should and not being deformed by the bones. Even though there is a bone there, you can just disable it. So I kind of like that. I think it works, works pretty good in terms of his tail, how it's interacting. And I'm just imagining why I'm doing this is this is how I imagine it moving and I'm like, okay, cool, that's kind of cool, I like that, but now I want his feelers to behave a bit more like hair as opposed to, to like wobbling jelly. So what I can do there is I can go, I can go directly to the bone and add another dynamic bone there, but just to keep things, all the dynamic bones together, I'll just create another component, add another dynamic bone, and I'll choose bone three, which is one of the feelers. Same thing again, add component, dynamic bone, and let's choose dynamic bone seven. Oh, so I forgot to press pause there, but we'll do it again quick. But now you see he's got both, but they function exactly the same way. Still looks pretty rad, like, but I think we could do something a bit different. So. Because I was in play mode, I just need to quickly do that again. So add component, dynamic bone, add component, dynamic bone, drag three, and drag seven. All right, so we're back. So he is wobbly, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down the damping, right? Damping's like how how it moves from one position to the other. So a nice way is also to keep it in play mode. So you can see now there's a bit of different starting to happen there, but let's do some stuff like, um, let's 
make the elasticity really soft and I'll do it on one ear there we go so you can <laughs> see that almost feels like more gravity right it's got a life of its own now um, <laughs> uh, stiffness as well it's like how stiff that geometry is so there yeah. you can see it feels more like um, like poles together but if I take that stiffness way down now it's a lot it's like one solid solid piece and this is all obviously a lot of play and depending what you're trying to achieve um, through just the various kind of adjustments here so in play mode quite often what I'll do is I'll actually make this object animate um, just going up and down like this so I don't have to manually do it I can just press play and then I just have a blank well a game object that is just animating like that constantly and then I can tweak all my values in real time while it's kind of animating um, so I think the feelers are a bit too crazy let's turn them down a bit let's give them some more damping Very stiff now. Yeah, so I think we're pretty happy with that. And it works, you know, like now you can see if I'm running forward in VR chat and I suddenly stop, right? You know, it's actually got, and that's what kind of really starts bringing in some realism. You can imagine, you obviously see this a lot on hairstyles, on ponytails. Um, on Lex's various avatars um, <laughs> and it's it's super fun it's super easy to do and then there's a few things you can do here so I can say okay let's let's work on his body right um, and we'll obviously apply to everything but we're just going to go to his body I'm going to say it's in play mode so I'm going to say let's give what if we give this a bit of gravity um, We have to change the pop groom. So we can let's say gravity on the Z. Let's say five. Let's put a five on each. Yeah. Okay, wait. Let's just see. We'll just see we're on the same one. So if we pump everything up here. That is the right one. Let's move the dampness, everything down so we can just see lots of mo motion. All right. And uh, let's apply, sorry, force, not gravity. So I'm going to apply, like, I can apply a downward force automatically to that bone. So you well, can imagine, like, um, Yes, that's cool. You can, yeah, you can influence it in, in, in different ways. Um, you've also got colliders. So say, for example, I'm doing a hairstyle, right? And let's, let's use these feelers as an example. So let's just give that a bit of up gravity. So now you see his tail's actually like floating up in the air, but say for example these feelers right every now and then they they might if i'm going forward really fast and stop the feelers might collide and just go through my body and then that's going to look really weird especially if you're doing hair on a character right if your hair is on on your head you don't want the hair to keep going through your face so what you can do there is you can create a, a let's make uh, I always just make a sphere jeez our worm is massive it's a sandworm um, just so I can see where this collider is going so I don't want anything to like interact with this collider so I'm just going to remove the mesh collider leave that there 
make sure that's in my worm and now I can say all right this dynamic bone I want to set at least one collider and that collider is going to be oh wait sorry um, I was thinking of um, yeah now I was thinking of cloth sorry um, but you can exclude Yeah, sorry, that was that was cloth. I don't know what exclusion means, what it goes in there, but you can it's, Rick, what you can do is you can you can assign the um the component across like a very large hierarchy and then exclude certain parts of that hierarchy from being dynamic bones, it, depending on how you want to attach it. I see, I see, I see. Okay. I see. And in in, in cloth which is another thing, but quite similar in a sense. Colliders would mean what I just did there. Like you set, same thing, like say you didn't have bones, I could set this as a cloth object and then I'd put a collider there which would stop the cloth falling through in that case. Um, what else can we chat about here? So friction, there's, there's a lot of like inertia, you know, how like when you forcefully stop things move, um, there's friction, but that's pretty much it. I mean, it's really quite a simple process. The, in terms in terms of bones, when when you start dealing with creating avatars and you want to have dynamic bones working on avatars, it won't apply to any of your base human mesh, right? Because these, every single thing here is reserved in a way by VR chat. If I apply a dynamic bone to it, it's not going to error out or anything. It just won't work. That's because VR chat's like I, I'm using this whole humanoid architecture, so you can't you can't really put dynamic bones on the forearm bone. Well, what I'd have to do for avatars, so in this case, looking at this guy, what I might want to do is have his aerial to be able to wobble when he runs. So in that case, I have to go back into motion, import my avatar mesh, and then I can just literally add one of those bones like you saw er earlier, or add two of them, do the weight painting, export it back here, and now in this hierarchy, I will now have a new bone three or bone four that I can actually use. So just bear that, that in mind. So in a case like this, I might okay. also want to add a little bone here and I can weight paint his stomach. So just very slightly it like, you know, wobbles when he, when he moves. But I couldn't say, cool, put, put a dynamic bone on his thumb because that's reserved for VR chat. But in this case, because it's not playing in VR chat, um, it still will work, you know, if you have like that little, a few of the toys I got in the alley and stuff that you can pick up. Those are just avatars, exactly the same meshes, but because they're not officially an avatar, then the dynamic bones will work um, pretty well. Rick, if you imported this um, rigged character into motion uh, to add that antenna bone, mm -hmm. would it mess with your existing rig at all, your character rig, something that you already set up, if you were then to bring it back in, does motion mess that up or? No, no, it, all? it doesn't. So it, it does, it does retain it, but human, human error often like, like messes it up, but I can for sure take this back. And what, what I have had issues in the past is overwriting the same model file. And um, for some reason I did pick up, um, like it would just, do something weird then but you can send this one exactly as it is it will retain all my my bone structure and then keep painting fixing it up in masterpiece and generally what I do is I'll just export out a new copy as something else just to just to check and then I'll just replace it um, so yeah, it's pretty that makes sense. yeah pretty seamless but also what, what I generally like to do is kind of keep my 
keep my base character as simple and as easy as possible and then I quite often add on geometry with the dynamic bones so yeah. like you've all seen my, my arm movements and stuff just I find it easier to work like that and um, but it's yeah it, it works incredibly well I think motions really I think if you ask any kind of traditional animator like skinning and rigging is always the one of the most boring parts of the job and definitely like doing it but le let's see we can actually so that, that that was an avatar mesh so let's say new project um oh wait so yeah we're on screen um so i'm going to say import model let's go back to our desktop and so this is this is an avatar that's been rigged in Mixamo and when you bring it in here it looks pretty pretty whack but the nice thing about this is you know I can still it functions exactly the same right as you saw a little worm every section here because Mixamo quite often stuffs things up especially with hands right so quite often I'll rig something in Mixamo just because it's it's so quick in terms of humanoids then I'll bring it back into here and I'll check the hands because quite often you'll you'll that will be the mess up is how the hands work so quite often you know you can come in here and nothing's changed in terms of all the all the weight painting here has remained remained the same which is really neat and and then, and then like for for the aerial bone for example um, does that need to be connected to the main armature, um, to the main rig? Can it just be like a standalone? It can, bone? So check as an example. Let's um, let's give this guy a belly, right? So he's got a rig. I'm going to say draw rig, and I'm literally just going to draw one bone coming out here, and that's not attached. It's just randomly kind of floating. It's it's attached to the the first bone, right? So that's coming out. And now what I want to do is I want to go back to skinning and select that bone. And because I didn't do the auto skin, which I did before, this bone is currently not attached to anything. So if I move that, nothing's going to happen. But I'm going to say, cool, when that bone moves, I want this guy's belly to move. You can see it's got the hard, hard blue line. So you, you can lighten. So I can come in here with like a light. Ooh, so lighten brush. Wait, so let's say subtract, make the strength really low. And then as I paint, you see how the the blue area comes in. So now when I move that, this bone, there's his little that's how his belly would wobble. But this is where you want to really come in and make it get this l really light blue color going just so it's not so hardcore but let's just go here and same thing again export model this is actually a humanoid but we're going to keep it and suit bot yeah let's do that and then in here we should have suit bot okay size the size did change but let's just check on dynamic bones Let's say the root bone again is hips, so his whole body shakes. Actually, let's just make his belly shake. Um, so now when I hit play, <coughs> because we, we haven't told the other mesh, you can see it'd be hard to see, but there's a little beer belly wobble. 
So you can see his buttons. If you look at his buttons here, when I move this, his belly is wobbling. Yeah, that's great. I'm I'm impressed with how um, you are able to move back and forth between these apps, um, Unity, Motion, and uh, and add your secondary animation like this. Uh, how does this compare to the way you would work previously without sort of the VR apps workflow? It'd be just the same number of apps, like Unity to another DCC to rig it, or yeah, how would you do it? I think predominantly, like you know, especially within the VR chat space, Blender is like the go-to kind of tool. So it would be, you know, a lot of people I think stick to like one CAD package, where you know traditionally, so it will be like Blender, weight paint in Blender, sculpt in Blender, set up your textures in Blender, um, and. Like I say, I think the, the nightmare of the dynamic bone, the weight painting and stuff, because of not having that spatial awareness, right? I think most of like doing it in VR, just that fact of knowing, like, are you laying a bone inside the arm? Whereas in traditional CAD packages, you have to lay the bone, then you have to rotate your model, then you have to move it, then you have to rotate it. And I think VR packages in general have just made that process a lot lot quicker and I, I think for me like also it depends on your style right like I'm often trying to just do stuff really quickly so I think the VR packages for me are just a lot quicker from sculpting to the to the rigging side um, I played a bit with the texturing in in masterpiece creator but still haven't quite got you, you know I think that the substance painter VR. I think that's the still missing pipeline, like a really black like, rock solid. And I know substance we're working on one, but now with the Adobe acquisition, I see Adobe's now releasing their own VR sculpting package. So I don't, don't know if that means they've now killed, killed uh, Adobe like medium in those, but yeah, you know, interesting. And that's pr pretty much it. Any other questions? Nope. Oh, what are the limits in VR chat with dynamic bones? Because uh, I think I've seen that it like allows three dynamic bones. Was it you, nine? Yeah, you can you can do quite a few, but it does it does get very taxing very quickly. It also depends, obviously, what what geometry it's driving, right? So if I'm doing something in, say, my my quill my quill sculpts, it's super. It's pretty light, and you can get away with quite a bit. But if your mesh in your stomach isn't that op optimized, it's going to struggle. And obviously, the more dynamic bones, but people get away with doing quite a lot. You can see some dresses and how they actually rig dresses, and you'll see lots and lots. And, but quite often what will happen is you can actually see your own dynamic bones working in VR chat, but a lot of people can't unless they've got all the super safety settings off. Um, so, yeah, but it definitely, it really, it's, it's one of those tools that it's really like magic and it's so easy to... We should probably mention also collisions are what kill the avatars in VR chat. What do you like mean? They like they'll allow sort of sixteen, eighteen clear uh, dynamic bones, but once you start adding uh, collisions to dynamic bones, something that will bounce off or restrict it, that's when they get super, super strict because that's really expensive. Yeah. So you can like have a have a dynamic bone which uh, collides with something, and that yeah. doesn't look good. And mm. and one thing I, I mentioned it earlier, like it's really nice to even if you know just in like a world, right? So say this is an NPC in a world, if it's got dynamic bones on it, I can still, so we'll do is just do a basic animation, right? Um, so I'm just gonna say, I want this character to move from there and let's move it over 10 seconds to here and let's give it little moment there and let's shoot it back quickly back to this position so what it's going to okay that's really slow Whoop. so 
So this is without dynamic bones because we're not actually in the play editor. And you can imagine the NPC, I can still add an animation to this. So when I was saying you can't add dynamic bones to the, the avatar, because it's not an avatar, I can even still add, add like a walking animation to this. Um, but just to illustrate the point, now when I hit play, so those di <coughs> dynamic bones carry across to all your animations. And it just brings it, you know, it, it brings that extra bit of aliveness to any project with very, very minimal kind of effort. Kind of scary. And that's dynamic bones. Do, do, do. Yeah. Oh, was that you, Rafi? I was wondering who that was. Yeah, it was me. What's up, bro? Great tutorial. Awesome. Great to see dynamic bones. Sweet. All right, guys. I think that's it. I'm going to stop the recording there.